ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to our CJ Club Roundtable for this year. Again, it's looking a little bit different than in years past, so thank you guys for um, all of your support and uh, attending our virtual summit. Hopefully you've enjoyed some of the sessions this morning. Uh, my name is Erin Gangloff and I'm the Managing Director of Programs and Membership for the Colorado Golf Association. Um, so we're really excited to share some things with you today and then towards the end of the roundtable, we will open it up. Thank you to those that have already submitted questions leading up to today. So we appreciate that. But again, this is open. This is one of our interactive sessions so that we can hear what's going on, uh, get feedback. Also, uh, you're able to ask questions to the whole group. So we wanna keep that in mind. I'm gonna quickly go kind of around my screen um, and introduce a few people that are gonna be speaking today. Let them do a quick introduction and then we'll get started. So first off, I would like to um, welcome our executive director, Ed Mate. Thank you, Aaron. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I just have really enjoyed today's sessions. Um, I have to confess, I have, if you see me turning my head, I'm watching the LPGA event uh, intently. I, I got to see how Jennifer's playing. She's two behind right now. So uh, I apologize if I, if I don't, but I am promised I'll give you my full attention. Uh, I just wanted to say how much I'm impressed that you've spent the day with us. It's gorgeous out. I don't know about you. I want to go hit some balls here soon. soon. So thanks for being here. And we've got Ashley Barnhart. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm our Managing Director of Golf Operations. So I oversee our competitive programs. That's both adult men and women championships, work with Robert and Kate very closely there. And then our Junior Golf Alliance programs as well. Um, I've been, this will be my eighth year in some capacity with the CGA, which is hard for me to believe, but um, I love being here and love having the opportunity to serve all of you. Thank you, Ashley. Debbie Cole. Welcome everyone, I'm Debbie Kolb. I'm manager of finance. I'm the one who sends out your billing for your uh, membership. And uh, I work closely with Aaron Greca, Kim Bussey and uh, Joe McCleary. We're part of what's called the helping hands team for the CGA. So any questions uh, usually directed to us. So I hope you've enjoyed today's session. Thank you. And Aaron Gareca. Well, hello everyone. Uh, again, uh, I hope you're able to join me for the nine o'clock WHS slash gin section. Uh, my computer loved it so much that uh, she decided that she was going to take a nap for a little while. So I'm on my phone. Um, so I apologize if when I'm speaking, um, if it's a little weird. So thank you for being with us today and I uh, look forward to uh, hearing slash seeing you ladies soon. Thank you, Erin. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. We have other staff that are on the call and they might chime in if there's a question that's kind of directed more towards their department, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about our membership benefits and we're gonna do a screen share here. And I'm just gonna talk you through uh, what our membership means more. So it's really important for us and for your members to also know everything that is involved with their membership. That being, you know, of course, it is our, our handicap that we always look at, and that's what our game management does. But then there's those added offers, our member play days, our clinics and leagues, and our discounts. So we're going to go on to the next slide where we're going to talk about kind of more in depth some of those things. So we love our CGA women's clinics. Uh, we have practice clinics around the state, as well as playing clinics. The practice clinics are going to take place um, actually out on a driving range. Um, they're going to work with instructors. You're going to go through different um, sessions where you're on a driving range, chipping green, putting, um, you name it. We're going to go through that. We're going to talk about rules as well. Um, and these are just a great introduction, especially if you know somebody or you're trying to attract more people to your own league. This might be a great place to send them if they're coming back to the game or maybe they're brand new. Our playing clinics is actually when we get out on the course uh, and you're with an instructor and you're gonna go out and you're going to play an executive length course or a par three. Those instructors are gonna help you more with your course management. So as you can see, we're all around the state. Uh, we start off in Grand Junction in May um, and you can kind of go around and play in those different things. So we do have this listed uh, in your downloads from today if you'd like to share that with your members. The next is our member play days. And we'll get the next slide. Oops. Sorry. 
Sorry about that. It's lagging on me. <laughs> is our member play days. So we started member play days, uh, kind of dipped our toe in the water of having uh, a chance for you guys to sign up, go out, play with family, friends, meet new people uh, around the state at different courses that you may not always get to play at. Um, so this year, our schedule, it's continuing to grow. So you can see we're going to start at the club at Flying Horse, um, and currently we're going to end at Columbine Country Club, but we still have more that we are actually adding to the list. Um, this is a great benefit because, again, you get to get out, play, uh, meet new people, uh, and we're all over the state. So we hope that you guys can join us. Uh, registration will open. You can get in there, and it's a huge member benefit to you. So we hope that you check those out. Again, pass those along to all of your members because um, we'd love to see you guys at at least one of our play days this year. So as you guys have started to notice, you receive every Thursday your CGA member insider. Uh, the first of the month, you see our new CGA monthly, which is our new digital publication. Hopefully you guys have been able to flip through that. There's been some great stories and articles. You'll notice that we highlighted the virtual summit for today. Um, that comes out on the first Thursday of the month. And then we have every week our monthly, our just our member insider, uh, where we'll have our rules videos. Um, you're, of course, going to get a handicap update. Uh, and this is just our way to keep you in the know of what's going on here with our membership and around the state. We also uh, are really big on our club insider. So if you are a club president or you are a handicap chair, you should be receiving our club insider. This goes out on roughly the fifth of each month. And what it does is it kind of gives us, gives you an opportunity to take a look at what's coming up, especially when it comes to what could be happening with your league. So as Debbie will talk about with billing, we always give you updates as to when that's gonna happen. We uh, inform you on all of our member programs and our offers, but it's also got stuff about championships and how to register. So although it can be a very large club insider and we chug it full of lots of great information, we hope that you take it. Um, we feel, feel free to go ahead and send it along to all of your members. There's no secret in there, but it's just a great way for us to communicate with you anything that's coming up. Um, if we have anything special going on, then what we will do is we will send out kind of a special edition and you'll notice it'll say the club insider. If you are not receiving the club insider, if you go on to our website and we can give, we'll send you guys links to all of this post the summit today. Uh, we need you to fill out a club info form. It may be that we just have old information. Maybe it's going to an old email address. We would like to get that up to date so that you guys are on the list so that you're getting all the information that you need. Again, we have a lot of seminars and clinics that are coming up. Uh, we're doing rules of golf seminars, WHS, Golf Genius, and we don't want you to miss out. And this is where we put that. So if you don't, you can always reach out to us and we'll make sure that we get you on the list or correct your information so that you're getting the Club Insider. And then our member zone discounts and other benefits. So as you saw today, the whole summit was presented by Sassy Caddy uh, and you get 20% off. This is a great place through our member zone for you to go in and take a look at different offers, um, things that you might not realize that you actually have as a benefit. Um, you can get a free month's trial with our Golf Forever partners, Avid Golfer. And these are just a few here on the screen that you can see. But if you go to our whole website, there are a ton more. There are some with travel discounts, hotel engines. So when we can finally uh, get through this pandemic, maybe we can head on out uh, and play some golf out of the state of Colorado. And the last thing is your membership is making a difference. We have several flagship programs here with the Colorado Golf Association. The Solar Caddy and Leadership Academy, which is near and dear to our hearts. Through that program, we have awarded uh, 30 Evans scholarships. And so we're really proud of that program. It's giving kids the opportunity to go to college uh, for, with free tuition and housing um, so that your membership helps with that. Also, we have our Hale Irwin Player Program. Um, and these are juniors that are aspiring to take their golf to the next level. We give them access, we give them fitness and nutrition training to do that. And then our community and wellness programs. We do golf in schools when we're able to be in the schools, we take them on field trips to the course. All of this is free to them, um, as well as we support um, 
several of our Special Olympics teams. We talk about STEM and agronomy in our field trips. We're partners with Big Brothers Big Sisters, LPGA Girls Golf, and Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. So this is kind of our give back to what this wonderful uh, association can do and what golf can do for the community. So we hope that you also pass that along that uh, you get all these great member benefits, but I know for myself, uh, making a difference really brings it home for me is why I'm a member of the CGA. So with that, uh, that kind of gives you just a small recap of what membership does here at the CGA. We can always pass along this information to all of you so you can pass along to your members and answer questions for that. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Ashley Barnhart, who's going to talk to us about CGA championships and volunteering. Thanks, Erin. Um, I'm going to jump right into talking about our women's tournament offerings. The biggest thing that I would say you should know about that is that there are opportunities for everyone. Um, this is not necessarily true of our men's events. Typically, those are only for the most skilled golfers. Um, that's not the case here. We have individual events. Um, for those of you that are winning your club championships every year, I know you're out there. Um, we have events tailored to you. We also have events where we kick those good players out. <laughs> Lots of opportunities for those with an 18 handicap or higher to play and compete with each other. Partner events um, and really everything that should be appealing, we have that available for you. Um, I certainly don't have enough time here to show all the details of all the events, but I will show you where to find that. So if you navigate to our website, you're on the home page here. Under the play tab, women's events, here you'll notice there's a tournaments tab or a tournaments link as well as USGA qualifiers. If you're interested in USGA qualifiers, you likely know who you are. That's where you would find those. Otherwise, click on CGA tournaments. This will pull up the list of everything that we have to offer this coming year. So it's in date order. Um, the first one here is our Mashi Championship on May 24th. These links to the left will give you additional information. And as we have that, it, they will all be active here. Tournament date, the registration window is something I wanna draw your attention to. These do not always go in order. So you'll notice the first one opens here for the Mashi on the 15th of this month. You'll also notice if you look down, you'll be able to register for the Western Chapter Championship and the Parent Child Championship that same day. So I just wanna point that out. Um, these are, there's different windows here for you to be aware of. But let's look at the Niblick, for example. You click in here, you're interested in playing, you'll figure out it's at Coal Creek on July 13th with all of the information that you or your league members would need to know. Entry fee, how many tournament players we're allowing, what the format is. Uh, you may not know what the Niblick is and I don't blame you, but you can come in here and figure out that it's the four ball stroke play and it gives you some more examples of what that is like, okay? Handicap index, all the things that you would need to know. Kate has done an incredible job of putting some preemptive COVID notes in here just based on our experiences last year. This is where we will communicate all the information that you would need. And down here, you can even see a nice little photo of our past champions. So Valerie and Lynn, if you're out there, congrats. We look forward to you defending your title this year. Um, you can do that for all of the tournaments that are linked here. That's where you would find that information. If you are new to playing tournaments and you haven't done it before, I will just let you know, you do need to create a profile first. And that tells you up here, that will make it much more simple for you. You do that first and then try to register for the event. As far as volunteering goes, um, we're a nonprofit organization. We clearly rely on volunteers in a lot of roles. We have volunteer board of directors. Um, I think we actually have some volunteers on this call that help at our tournaments, help administer the rules, um, and help at our, some of our membership programs that Erin was talking about earlier. So again, if you're interested, we'll hop back to our website. This time you're gonna go to the membership tab, volunteer center. In this top section is for our existing volunteers. You can kind of sift through here and see what they're up to, tournament and rules volunteers. But if you're new, right here, volunteer interest form, big red button in the middle of the page, click on that you'll see which types of volunteers we're accepting for this year. Fill out this form at the bottom, and then one of our staff members will be in touch with you about those opportunities. 
I do have one question that's going to require your participation here. Um, one thing we typically find that our volunteers love to be around kids, and that's usually where we need the most help. Um, we have an age division of 11 to 13 year olds, and we've been kicking around an idea for quite some time about having a group chaperone program. They're just young. They're out on the course by themselves. We ask mom and dad not to be involved. They need help. Um, so I'm just curious to know if you think your league would have interest in volunteering as a group. So you would get together a group of ladies from your league, however many that is, five to 10, come out on a Thursday and help us chaperone those kids around the golf course. I think it could be kind of a fun way. I know you guys already do an incredible amount of service projects um, and fundraising efforts through your leagues, but we're not gonna hold you to this. <laughs> this is just kind of a straw poll for our own benefit. So Aaron, if you would launch that poll, just give us a yes or a no if you think your league as a whole might be interested in some group volunteering for our junior events. Ashley, I apologize. For some reason, it's not showing up. So I will oh. make sure that's in there and we will launch it in a minute. Great, we can launch it later. Well, think about it. Now you have lots of time to, to consider what we're asking you. Um, if you have any additional questions about volunteering or women's championships, feel free to chat me throughout this. Um, I believe Kate Moore is also on this call. So let us know and we'll be happy to get you guys hooked up with whatever that is. And I believe next up is Debbie Cole. Okay, I'm going to talk about billing. Um, <clears throat> this year, the USGA have made, has made changes to our billing process. So hopefully this year we won't run into the problems we had yes, last year with duplicate billing. Um, the problem last year had to do with dates. They were not looking at the status date when I was pulling the rosters to do the billing. That's supposed to be corrected. And um, as we've asked all clubs and leagues to please have their members that have not paid for the 2021 season to be inactivated by April 15th. That way, when you start collecting the money and activating your league, your people in your league, the roster that I pull then on May 1st will be accurate and represent those paid members for your league. As I said, I'll pull that roster on the 1st of May. It takes us about a week to do it because uh, frankly, we send out about 730 to 750 invoices at that time. Uh, then after that, I will bill monthly and uh, continue billing until the end of the season with the last bill going out on um, October for October to November 15th. And usually they're not very large. So if you have any questions about your bill, uh, the process, don't hesitate to call me or email me, dkolb at coloradogolf.org. Uh, the ex next issue I'd like to bring up, and this is something that is a question that comes up regularly for all of the staff at the CGA. And it has to do with the golfers belonging to more than one club. Why do we have to pay the gin more than once? I'm gonna try and put it in a nutshell as best I can. As you know, the CGA is licensed by the Colorado, by the US Golf Association. And part of that license is our requirements for clubs and leagues. They have to be a part of a golf facility. A golf facility is like the golf course. And a golf league or club is an organization of at least 10 members that operates under bylaws with committees, especially a handicap committee. And the purpose is to supervise golf activities, provide peer review, and maintain the integrity of the USGA handicap system. That being said, when a golfer joins more than one league, they are put on each league's roster. Therefore, they pay the gin handicap again. Um, this is important because if a person is on the league roster, then if something happens with scoring, the handicap committee has the oversight 
to be able to look at scoring for those individuals on that roster. We do have um, this document on our website. I will try and show you where that is. Okay, that's not what I want to see. Let me give me a minute. I'm not real good at this. Hey, Debbie, it is also in the download section of the Women's Summit uh, platform within Reg Fox. Okay. And so uh, if you can't okay. find it on our website, um, or at least if you can't find it there, email us and we can certainly email it to you. Okay, I've got to get try and get back to unshare my screen. Um, can't do it. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm uh, bad with the computer sometimes. Okay, if you have any questions, again, don't hesitate to get in contact with me. And uh, thank you for your time. Karen Griffin, did you have anything to add? I was just going to say the one thing I wanted to add is for those of you asking what the, uh, the gin fee is for this year, it remains the same from 2020, and that is $35. Other than that, uh, Debbie, job well done. All right. Well, thank you. I'm going to launch that poll now that Ashley was talking about. Here we go. You guys wouldn't, you'll see it pop up on your screen. You'll go ahead and answer for me, and that'll give her some idea. more coming in. Okay. And here you go, Ashley, about 62% said yes. All right. Thank you. All right. So moving on, like I said before, we did send out an email asking for some questions in advance that you guys might have for the group um, and for our staff. So one of the questions that we had was, will rules such as not raking bunkers and leaving the flag in the hole be the same in 2021? Ashley, this question is for you. Thanks. Um, what a good question. Um, I, I unfortunately don't have the answer and I was hopeful that I would. Um, on Friday, we sat in a webinar that was conducted by the Tri-County Health District about some of these changes and updates to their requirements as it relates to things like flag sticks, bunker rakes, um, et cetera. And it was more of the same, quite honestly. Um, my biggest takeaway from that is that there are so many different categories of, I'll call them events, um, situations, scenarios that they're trying to piece together for golf. For example, there's guidance for sporting events. There's guidance for outdoor gatherings. There's guidance for recreation. There's guidance for personal recreation. And so the, the team at Tri-County is trying really hard to piece together some of those um, items that make sense for golf. As far as the specifics with bunker rakes, they were very wishy-washy in saying, we now know that the science is saying there's a very small risk of transmission from surfaces, common touch surfaces, but it still is not zero. Um, so, we're hopeful to see more specific guidance on that from the state and from Tri-County soon. I, I fully realize that the golf season technically opens in about a week and a half, so that's not helpful. Um, but that's what I know. That's what I know straight from the health authorities. Um, as far as CGA championships, we have not made any specific decisions yet. We're leaning towards, again, just working with the facilities and doing what their directives are. Um, and doing what they're required to do by their ownership or their government muni municipalities as well. I wish I could give you a straight answer, but maybe Great. soon. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, and with that, I know that we had somebody that had a question just about the direction uh, with COVID. And I think that kind of sums it up that once we have more, uh, we know a little bit more Then, of course, we will make sure that that gets in your guys' hands of what we're doing in our championships as well. Um, our next question is, uh, and we had several questions about this, and it's um, diversity and inclusion at our clubs for female golfers. So I'm actually going to give this over to Ed Mate, uh, who's going to talk about what we're doing here with the CGA when it comes to that. Yeah, thank you, Erin. I assume you can hear me okay? Yes. Great. 
Um, just to pick up on the COVID real quick, uh, what, the question that came in in advance was about um, two riders per cart. As Ashley just said, um, we certainly know a heck of a lot more in 2021 than we did in 2020. I would, you know, the question was about, um, you know, are they going to allow separate carts? My understanding, and I spent quite a bit of time on this working with Khadija Haynes, who's on our board, who's very involved at the state government level. The answer is yes. You, they pretty much have to provide you a single rider cart. Some courses are, are uh, making you pay an additional fee. Uh, with the with the laws around um, access and um, so forth, I'm not sure that that's technically legal. But uh, bottom line is, if you're uncomfortable riding with somebody in a cart, you certainly can and will be provided with a single rider cart. I think that's safe to say pretty much at any facility. Um, so now this is a really uh, timely question. We just formed a diversity and inclusion task force headed by Jeff Howard um, and made up of uh, three other members um, and two staff support. The other members are Khadija Haynes, Mary Wolf, and Kathy Malpass. And it's supported by our very own Aaron Gareca and Mark Kelbel. Um, first of all, I'm very proud of the CGA in this area. We have a board of 33, 15 of which are women. Um, even though our membership is about 78% men and about 22% women, um, we, we feel very strongly that it's very important. And this is an area of growth for the association. When we merged with the CWGA in, in 2018, we made that promise that we would continue to be a very inclusive organization. And it wasn't gonna be um, you know, uh, men first, women second. And today's summit is, I think, further evidence of that. So what the Diversity and Inclusion Task Force is really going to be looking at an array of issues, um, but really think of it as kind of an overlay across everything we do as an organization and looking at it through the lens of diversity and inclusion, whether it's um, special needs, gender, um, so, you know, sexual preference and identity, all of those things are, are, are a factor in, in what we're looking at. And we, we hope right now, frankly, our staff is pretty, uh, not as diverse as we'd like to see it be. So we're really looking at bringing on more candidates to our internship programs that come from diverse backgrounds. Uh, we think that's the best way to really change the face of the staff. Um, but um, I think the question that I saw in advance was really relative to club leadership at the private sector. And I'll be honest with you, that is, uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, if you look at the boards and leadership of many of our private clubs around the country and around the state, it's pretty, it, it, there isn't a lot of diversity. Um, there's only so much we can do. Uh, obviously, getting our board um, diverse is a, is a way to lead by example, uh, but also to um, attract board members who are going to be influential at those clubs to try to make a difference. So it's a long, it's a long marathon. Um, but it's certainly something that we are very active in and, and uh, we'll, we'll be looking, we'll be seeking new members for our committee. So if you're interested, uh, if this is a subject that you are interested in, then please reach out to me directly or as Ashley said, through that volunteer web sign up form for volunteering, you can do it that way as well. Uh, two other quick comments I just wanted to make um, pertinent to what we've just talked about. Um, we, we, and again, we're, I always cringe when I hear the term gen fee. Um, you know, it, we are so much more than a handicap. If all we were was a handicap, we would we would have not held this session today. We would have nothing to talk about. Um, we are a full service membership organization. And I really wanna commend the staff, um, you know, particularly the membership team headed up by Aaron Gangloff. And this membership means more mantra, uh, a lot of M's there, um, you know, really is is our North Star. We have 62,000 members and we want to grow that. We want to get to 65,000 by 2022. Uh, and we also need a lot more women. So you can help us by inviting your friends and colleagues and family to come out and play golf. Uh, I think golf is a game that's very intimidating. And the best way to bring people into the game is by inviting a buddy. Um, and I know for my wife, that's the only way she played golf initially was when a friend invited her to join her um, so really, really, you're our best sales force we could possibly have. And there's nothing more gratifying than, than bringing somebody else into the game and sharing your love for the game of golf. Last comment I just wanted to thank, I was just looking at the, my video screen here to see that Melissa Ward is on and Phyllis Jensen, both are on our board. Uh, if you have comments that you wanna uh, share with them, they're, they're listening in here as well. And, and uh, they're our ambassadors. There may be others, I apologize if there's other board members that are on the call. 
So thank you all for joining and uh, I'll shut up there. Thank you, Ed, that's great. Again, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, we are gonna, I'm gonna put up some poll questions. I think it's questions that really uh, pertain to this group of what you guys are doing at your club. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna launch those. The first one really has to do um, with Golf Genius. Um, and if you do have that premium license, uh, the question came in that they'd like to know what others are doing. So I'm gonna launch that. You guys wouldn't mind answering that. Judy Malis, my apologies. I see you're on there. So as another one of our board members. <laughs> Still getting those coming in. And you can also chat your question. Also, I feel that pretty confident with this group. If you'd like to unmute yourself to ask a question, please feel free to do that as well. Before we jump any further, I did see Carmen, uh, we had a question in the chat that I don't believe was answered. Um, would you mind elaborating on the inclement weather policy and, and what you're looking for? I think you're still muted, Carmen. Sorry, Matt. Here we go. No worries. <laughs> okay, here's my dumb question. Um, I've been in um, different leagues through the years, and um, generally, leagues decide on the morning of an inclement weather day, um, early in the morning, probably, um, if it's a go or no go for golf. Um, does it make sense to make the decision the night before? Are there any leagues that are doing that? That's my question. You know, unfortunately, I, I am not uh, in your guys' position. So if anybody that is on the call wants to unmute and, you know, chime in, or you guys are more than welcome since you are our representatives for those clubs. Uh, I'll we don't in. make this it the night sport. before. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. We don't make it the night before because we don't, a lot of times we don't know. We, we won't know until the morning of whether or not we're going to play on, on a lot of those days. We uh, usually call it the night before. Uh, we play early, like 6 a.m. And so there just is not enough time to, you know, get all that accomplished. So uh, with the weather apps out there, we find that we've got a pretty good idea what the weather is going to be like at 6 a.m. And so we usually call it the night before. And if I could chime in, we have the Golf Genius Premium. And so the text feature works really nicely at Welsher, where we literally text out what the, um, if play day is canceled um, and what we typically do, and Carmen's in my group. So um, mm -hmm. it, we sometimes don't cancel the golf, but we will shift the game to accommodate how many play. So, because we have some very hardy ladies that'll play with uh, as long as it's not snowing, so. Okay, uh, good, Melissa, that really helps. I'm at City Park as well. And so I was wondering if uh, sort of like the best practices at Welshire, if there's something that might make sense for us. And maybe on some days when maybe it's sort of obvious for the course that we can be helpful to our golfers as well as the course to just uh, let people know the night before. That was my thinking we, behind. We usually use our, our limits are below 50 and with precept, uh, we will cancel the day before if that's what the, the forecast says. So the combination of those two uh, is a definite cancel. But other than that, we kind of, sometimes we have to wait till the morning, but that's, if it's gonna, if the if the forecast says those two things, 
we, are, we definitely cancel because no one wants to play in both those conditions. Okay, huge, that's a huge help. Thanks, Melissa. Okay, good, you bet. Thank you, and with that, Melissa teed it up talking about the Golf Genius Premium. So I'm gonna share the results with you guys so that you can see how many are actually using that uh, license and whether they not they think that it's worth it or not. So kind of gives you guys the results there. Aaron? Yes, Jean. Based on that question, for the ones that are using the premium, can you just give us a little bit of an idea what that gives you versus um, the non-premium? I'd be happy to answer that. Um, so first of all, I have to preface this. The men's club pays for the premium at Welshire and we just give them a $200 donation towards uh, that service every year. Um, but the incredible things that you can do with the premium, uh, the text messaging is one of them. Scoring on the course using the app is huge, uh, especially from tournament chairs point of view, because it really does assist us in getting the tournament results out much faster. Um, and then the use of the app itself is only allowed for the premium. So you can use a browser on a mobile device to go to the Golf Genius site, but the app itself is a little bit more user friendly. Uh, we find a lot of people that have difficulty with uh, computers, uh, find it easier to sign up and see what games being played, look at the winners. And then there's a lot of features you get to put on your portal that you can't get with the basic um, Golf Genius. And that is, uh, we find that there's some really fun things you can put on there. We've even created like a, if you, if you know the uh, next door um, feature that's out on the web where you can share, you know, stories in your community and sell things. We have a, a, a next door app on that, uh, on the golf genius app where our players can talk about if they have room in their foursomes or if they're selling clubs or whatever is coming up. So um, the, I would say that, we have benefited greatly from the men's club using the premium feature. I know you can also accept payments as well. We have not done that yet. Um, I think there's a fee associated with it, but the men's club does that as well, uh, being able to collect fees for, for games. Hey, Does Aaron Gareca. How much the premium costs? Yeah, I was going to say, Aaron Gareca, I know I if was, you saw that question or not. Yeah, so uh, if I may chime in here. Um, so, I'm a big fan of Golf Genius Premium, let me preface. So, uh, you know, I'm a little one-sided here, um, but Golf Genius Premium, I believe, if I'm still up to date, is $2,800 plus, an, or that's an annual fee, which uh, can change, uh, most likely will increase, with a, a one-time onboarding fee of $400. So the initial fee for this year, I believe, would be somewhere around $3,200. Hi, this is but what a lot of clubs are doing, nope. Oh, Go, oh, I'm sorry. Ahead, it's Amy David. That was my question um, that I asked ahead of time. I believe it's gone up to 3,000. And um, in our particular course, we're just a nine hole. And uh, it is very pricey if, because they only license it by course. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, I think we've done the mm -hmm. financial analysis that said it's probably not worth it. If I had $200. <laughs> where I had a men's club that would allow us to donate 200, I would say it's well worth it. Uh, but you would have to have, I think, league members who are pretty savvy to use it, to be able to use some of the features that would be overall beneficial to 125 members. So it was good to know, uh, you know, what people think. I would love it if Golf Genius would do it more, say at the South Suburban level than at a course level, because it does become pretty pricey at a course level. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. And Amy, just to, to ask, when you say the South Suburban level, are you talking about a municipality that may have multiple golf courses under its umbrella? Correct. And when I uh, actually got in touch with Golf Genius, you know, basically they said they license it at the course level only. Sure. Okay. So Thank you for that clarification. I play two leagues. For example, the Lynx in um, Highlands Ranch, they actually pay for it. So I'm not really paying significantly more in my uh, membership fee as a league member, but that would not be the case. So example, there's not a site license at the 
you know, municipal level. And uh, we only have three leagues at our course. So it's very cost prohibitive. So whoever deals with Golf Genius, it would be wonderful if they came up with a little bit more creative ways to make it more affordable for most of us, even if it's, you know, they cut down on some of the features. Thank you. And just to kind of chime in on that, I know it used to be um, in the past that you can actually pay for certain features, um, but it's not, uh, it's a uh, kind of case by case basis. Um, that was before the mobile scoring was available for a, a period of time last year due to COVID. Um, I don't know if that is still the case. Again, I don't really, uh, I'm not as up to date on my uh, support features as I used to be, um, or should I say my support premium features as I used to be, but I know that used to be the case. So uh, if you are interested in a piece of the premium, uh, please feel free to put that into the chat in the help button. And uh, our guy, John Warkentine or somebody from the Golf Genius team will uh, put you in touch with a sales rep from Golf Genius. So Aaron, Amy, again, is that something that we should go through CGA for, or should I really be working directly with my golf pro? Uh, you would want to be working directly with Golf Genius. Right. So should I go through my pro really, or yeah. should I go through what you just said? Through you to somebody Your on pro. the Golf Genius team? Your golf pro. Yeah, that's it where I have found it differs, pro, yeah. it differs in your best sources, your golf pro. Because they'll right. know who's paying. Because yeah, again, that one. Yeah, exactly. And usually from my, from what I've seen, uh, at first, a lot of clubs were reluctant to do it. But now, uh, of course, uh, tends to have all of their leagues, men's, women's uh, band together and increase the fee for their each club to pay for the the premium sense it does encompass all all leagues at the golf course. So just a suggestion. Thank you. May I say something real quick? Go for it, Debbie. Um, I belong to the Saddle Rock League and we do not have premium at Saddle Rock. I know they have it over at Meadow Hills because the men's club pays for it. Um, but we use the, the Golf Genius, the free package and uh, our tournament chair last year did an incredible job of using what was available in the portal to um, put all of our club results, um, games, all the information we need for our weekly uh, competitions up on that portal through Golf Genius. I don't foresee that we'll be at a point where we can afford premium. We only have 53, 54 members but we've been able to make the current Golf Genius package work for us. It's taken a lot of work, but for right now it works just fine. We use it. We don't have the premium at Aurora Hills either, but we used the free package last year. And one of the things we did to get around not being able to enter your own score is every Tuesday morning, we had two people there with a computer and as the golfers came in we keyed their scores right into golf genius right there as they finished so then we had the results and we were able to update jen and do everything with it but it's cost prohibitive for us also and we also have some technology challenged women if i put it that way so i don't know how much they would use some of the other parts anyway but i mean for us it's not an issue it's not something that that we're going to be able to get i will but say this, work. That it, worked, it worked great i will say that the basic features i think are fine um but as far as technology um challenge i don't think there's a club out there that's probably more technology challenged than the welsher and uh, we have mm. a, um, a member who's 95 and she scores on the app with no problem like it's that easy. She says it's it's a piece of cake. So, I, I mean, just to kind of reassure you that there is, uh, it, it, it's, it is a really easy way to do it. So if you can find a way to combine with all the other clubs that are at your course to maybe pay that fee as a big group instead of just one league, and uh, it's worth it. But like I said, you know, we don't have enough. To say that. We don't have enough other clubs for yeah. one. And that's too bad. And, and I'm going to struggle 
a little bit even getting i have members that don't even have email addresses so with the new change to gin where they have to have a unique email address and whatever we're even going to have to work through that and i don't have a lot of them that are technology challenged but i've got a few but but like i say with the number of leagues we we have at aurora hills it's not it's really not an option for us we just don't have enough um money in the in the pool Alyssa is the last name yeah. of that 95-year-old. Is it is, is her last name Jobs or Gates by chance? No, that's Marge Hook. Marge Hook is amazing and still playing too. No problems. And if I may chime in one last time just on the topic, uh, the biggest reason a lot of people use premium um, is for the e-commerce feature. Um, it is very similar to what people used to have during or with e-clubhouse. Um, and so it kind of makes things a little, it streamlines the joining process for a lot of clubs. So that's one of the main reasons. But in my opinion, if you don't want to do e-commerce, the basic package of Golf Genius, um, once you've played around with it for a little while and know some of the, the back-end tricks and things, works really, really well. Okay. Thank you. We had another question that came in through the chat from Lori saying, do you have suggestions on member retention for clubs? We are good at recruiting new members, but there are some members who leave because they don't feel they play well enough to be competitive. We are known to be a friendly club, but I think we could be better at providing ways to support all levels of golfers. Does anybody in the group want to speak to that as to uh, ways that maybe they help to have good retention in their club for maybe a beginning golfer to make them feel welcome? God, I feel like I'm dominating the responses here, but uh, uh, at Wellster, what we did this year, brand new, and we've had pretty good response so far, is we created a new membership level called the Legacy Member. There are some requirements, like you have to be a member for a certain period of time, um, but essentially what we're doing is you can be a member of the club, but you don't have to maintain a handicap, um, and you don't have to post your scores, so you can treat it as more of the social part of uh, the game as opposed to the competitive part of the game. And there's no pressure because you can pick up the ball at any time and you still get to participate in hole in one um, competitions, chip in um, competitions and uh, team competitions. So um, that's what we did. Um, and like I said, we've gotten about, I think four or five members so far uh, out of 90 uh, total. And um, we're hoping that that's something that uh, people will, uh, you know, revert to when they maybe can't play the whole year or they just uh, don't want to um, be, you know, worry about the, their score that much. We do the, we do the same, the same thing. We've got a, um, a flight for players that, that really don't compete with the other one. They can pick up their balls if they, um, if they want, they don't have to turn in their score. They don't have to have a handicap, but as far as all of the other benefits of the league, you know, they, we, I mean, we even let, let our weekly tournament happen in that flight, but just for, for those people. But um, that's also where we put people who have yet to establish a, a handicap. But uh, we have quite a few people there because we'll let anybody in that wants to join and a lot of the ladies haven't played, haven't played in a while, come in very intimidated. But, um, you know, once we explain to them that they can play in that flight and be fine, we tend to keep them. And we have more ladies coming in because it's, they don't have to compete with everybody else. Um, a nice follow-up question to that came through and just saying, you know, if there is a problem with timeliness and pace of play, you know, what's your best suggestion of teaching that and passing information along to that new member? We, we try, well, we're working on that, but we kind of would like not to have a foursome out of that flight. And uh, we want them to play with other players on the, in the league and um, 
I mean, there's some weeks we may have a couple of them and you are going to um, maybe hamper your score that week, but you're working with them to work through course management and how to do certain things. Now, before COVID came in last year, we were gonna work with our Wednesday 18 hole league and see if some of their women were willing to come and play with some of ours to help them with that because then the ladies wouldn't feel as intimidated playing with someone in our league. So we were trying to set up some type of uh, mentor type um, situation, but we didn't go through with that because last year was just different, but that's still on the table for something we want to we want to do, we talked to the league, I mean, the course, and they were going to give that person cart fees and playing fees for that day. But we were just trying to get somebody to work with those ladies to, um, like you say, to, to get through the course and course etiquette and pace of play, because we still deal with pace of play. It just doesn't matter what we do. We, we're getting better, but we still have pace of play problems. Jean, can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, the ladies that are in your uh, legacy flight, uh, are, do they still play, pay the uh, full league fee? Yes, they do. Okay. Uh, because they get all of the other benefits of the, of the league. I mean, our point system, we get points for attendance and points for different things. So at the end of the year, they still get... Um, some money for them participating in the league all year. So yes, they do pay uh, the same okay. fee across the board as everybody else. And in for welfare, ours is reduced because they don't, they do not win except for in those um, specified uh, games like chip-ins and uh, hole in one where score doesn't really count. That's, it's very easy to mark down. So our, our that's one of the things they forego for Welsher is no participation in points or any um, money that is uh, available at the end of the year. You know, and and we, it's significantly we, reduced to uh, membership. Yeah. We had to figure out with the rule changes last year, it, it kind of helped us, but we then still had to figure out some things because you know, now they can pick up their ball and get a maximum score for that hole. So we kind of had to figure out if they picked up their ball on every hole and got the maximum score which they don't, but is that putting them at an advantage over anybody else? So we kind of worked and played with all of that. So they are just competing for any weekly tournaments and whatever, they are just competing with that group in that flight. And overall, it seems to work out pretty well, but no, they're, they're included in, in everything, so. Um, we do it a little different at, at at Eisenhower, we do, they pay a different fee. We have them pay a different fee because they're not getting a weekly payout. Each week we have a different game and they, if, if they, if they're just a social member, then they don't get a, any of the profit from if they win in that game, but they still get to get out and play and are social. And as far as the new members, we have what we call a welcome committee and we try to play with new members in the beginning because I know I was scared to death when I joined and I didn't know anybody. So it kind of made it, makes it kind of fun where they can get out there and kind of see how things go. And the person who knows what they're doing or has been there a while can help that new person with the scoring. And we play a different game every week. And they, I don't, as uh, Jean said, kind of with the course etiquette and uh, pace of play. And I don't know, I think it kind of helps to, get the new people out there with somebody who's been out there a while and also it lets them help to meet some people and learn some names. Thank you, well, Candace. What we found with our D league is a lot of the ladies that start off and they're thinking they're only there for the social benefit. They stop, they play every week and turn in their scores and establish a handicap. And eventually they move out of D and move into C because now they want to play better. They so uh, at the beginning of the league, at the beginning of the year, um, well, like I said, we we charge the same thing because if they move out of D and into C, then you know, then we've got to 
an issue there. But we have several of the ladies that started off in D not knowing what club they even hit that have worked their way up and now they're at least in the, you know, in the sea flight and for them, that's great. All right. Um, it looks like that's the, that's a really great way to get people in. I know we're starting to run out of time. I did want to get to one of the questions. Gail, would you mind elaborating on what you mean about weekly tournaments and what you might be looking for in a, any particular question about that? I just um, am, <laughs> I'm new to doing all the tournaments and, um, was hoping that um, Golf Genius, not probably not Golf Genius, but CGA could have some ideas for um, those of us that have to do that every week um, to, to give us some ideas for, for new games and fun games that are inclusive. Well, on the CGA side, I know that's something for us to consider to compile as a resource. Um, I mm -hmm. don't think we have anything in a PDF format right now that we could just pass along, but it's certainly something for us to, to go back and work on. Does anybody else have any good suggestions um, on some weekly formats? If there's some way you can get your email addresses out to us, we have, and in fact, last year we went to pretty much all of our tournaments in Golf Genius so that it uh, figures them out as soon as we put the scores in. But I could send you our list um, if somehow somebody could work to get email addresses out. The only thing we can't do, and Aaron, Aaron, wherever he went, oh, there he is. Mm. Say every year, Golf Genius would be a lot better for us if it captured putts. But it doesn't, it still doesn't, and it just can't figure out why that hasn't moved up the priority list, but I won't go into that soapbox right now, but. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, if we can get your email address, I could send you, I could send you our list. It's in a, it's in a PDF and we just put it in Golf Genius and each week we have the tournament ready. Well, from that perspective, I'd be more than happy uh, to, to figure out a way for those people that did attend and register for this session um, I'll go ahead and shoot an email out. And if you want to send me that information, I can distribute that okay. uh, just for everybody's privacy also. purposes. I'd rather have our emails going out to each other. Um, okay. But Thanks, yeah, Beth. feel yeah, feel free to send me that information. We can compile that and send it out to those that registered for this. Yeah, session. I just think I think a change in tournaments weekly and and I mean, I having the same tournaments even year in and year out gets kind of old and we all look for something, a new challenge, something new and fun. Right. That's, so a great that's great. Idea. Thank, Thank you. you all. And Aaron, we still need putts. <laughs> yeah. She's not going to give up on that one. <laughs> oh, I, I, that... I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> I, Jean. I do have, I do have good news on that front, but I'll leave you hanging for now. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to wine and dine uh, golf genius at the Loma again. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I may know, I think I may know a guy. Who might, who might be able to help out. But just a heads up, that is on their priority list for this year upcoming. I don't know what quarter, um, but I know it's gonna be called advanced statistic customization. Is it gonna be in the free version and not just the premium is also an issue. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, ah, that is all I know. Darren, you got more pull than that. Uh, they, they don't tell me things anymore. All right. Looks like we um, are we talking about putts and golf genius. Um, and just to kind of go off of that, if you did attend Aaron's session or the golf genius session earlier, or if you were in the world handicap update, um, there are some seminars that are coming up that are on our website uh, for you to go in to learn about the different features with golf genius. Uh, Aaron will be doing talking about world handicap. Um, so make sure that you do check that out on our website and register for those so you don't miss out. Um, and I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Erin, but they are doing them in different levels like 101, 102, 103 for Golf Genius. So you kind of work your way through that. Uh, love to see you guys participate in that uh, uh, this spring. So check out our website for that. Again, that will also be in your Club Insider. Um, it looks like, Lori, a way to calculate ringers for the season 
with 27 holes in Golf Genius. Again, that is right up Mr. Gareca's alley. You may or may not know. Just keep uh, keep sending those in, those help tickets in to Golf Genius. I actually the think more, you can. The more do, times they see it. Aaron, I think you can do ringers for 27 holes. Um, you just have to set up a 27 hole course. I, I think that you can put it in or three nines or something, but it, it can be done. I'm pretty sure. If, as long as you're talking about. Yeah, there's a. Yeah, three separate nines, there's I a, think. There's a. Yeah, there's a way to do it. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't the, the platform to, no. to discuss it at the moment. So if you do have questions about that, yep. um, I'd be more than happy to uh, to uh, discuss that with you further. Great. What I'm going to do really quick, just to kind of wrap us up, since we are past two o'clock and it's beautiful weather, I'm sure some of you have tea times or would like to go hit some golf balls. Um, I have two more poll questions. These questions came in uh, before the session. So I just want to make sure that we get those covered. Um, so I'm going to launch the first poll and it's about member guest tournaments this year. And if you're planning to have them, uh, if people are not, if ladies are not vaccinated. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share those results. It looks like it's overwhelming that we're going to get back to having some member guest tournaments this year at 63%. Some of you may be unsure because you may be having to wait on your golf courses. So completely understand that as well. And then our last poll question. Uh, this one is about shotgun tournaments. And I think this also relates to COVID and what courses are doing. They're just trying to get an idea if you are going to do shotgun tournaments this year. Yeah, and speak to this from my side on the social, the member play days, we do have a, a mixed bag of tee times and shotguns. So I know uh, these decisions are going to be made individually per the county restrictions and then the golf course making that decision as well. Um, and so I know from my standpoint, working with golf courses, I've had kind of a, like a 60, 40, 40% uh, 40 are going back to shotguns. But also a good chunk of them have found that tee times have been a, a good alternative and are going to stick with that direction. So far, we're being told we have to plan everything as if we were going to do it tomorrow. So shotgun starts right now are not an option for us because they're not allowing shotgun. Now it may change as we go into the season, but all of our planning, we have to do as if it's getting, it's happening tomorrow. So shotgun, in fact, that affects our breast cancer tournament and everything right now, because right now we still can't have, we're still not having shotguns. And as you guys will see, again, it's kind of mixed. So some are unknown, kind of like what Jean was saying. It kind of depends upon the course and the city in which you're in, but it uh, looks like several of them would like to get back to that shotgun at that 43% yes. I noticed in the chat, Cam said that they had a shotgun today. So first of all, kudos for being here with us today and not out playing. Uh, we appreciate that because it's beautiful outside, or at least I think so. <laughs> So thank you for being with us today. Well, with that, guys, I'm going to thank you guys for everything today. I know that we could probably go hours and hours and talk about multiple different things going on at your leagues. Please remember that you can reach out to us. If you have questions, we can always send out um, surveys to our club presidents, our handicap chairs. If there's questions that come up, you know, there isn't a reason that we can only do this once a year. We can always get together and do more club roundtables share ideas because this is gonna be the best way for us to grow the game of golf for women. Um, and as a female who I owe everything to golf because I have my career in golf, I played in college and I started when I was a youngster when they wouldn't let you play on Aurora courses until you were nine. So my parents did a little bit of lying on that one. So thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate everything that you're doing at your clubs and for your members and to keep this game moving forward. So 
Go out, enjoy the rest of the day. All of this will be on our website next week. Um, and here shortly within the next 30 to 40 minutes, you're going to receive an email. Um, and in that email, you will have a video from our board president, Kent Moore. Uh, and he'll talk about our players of the year and volunteer of the year. And we also have some bonus content since we couldn't be in person and have all the different speakers that we wanted to, and we don't want you to sit on Zoom all day. Uh, we've got some little extra things for you when it comes to some swing tips, getting ready for those first tee jitters, um, and some golf fitness. So make sure that you check that out. And again, if you guys need anything, we are always here. So please give us a call or email, um, and we'll, we'll work on getting those pots to golf genius. So thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate job, it. Aaron. Thank you guys. Thank you. Nice job, EG. Well done. Go. Yes, right. excellent, excellent session there. Really good. It's a, a great day. Awesome work by the entire team. Well done. Went pretty quick. I think, uh, you know, between my phone and uh, I was able to hit a few putts, like you said, Aaron, in between a few sessions. But uh, <laughs> no, it was really, really good. So great job to the whole team and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Well deserved. So. Thank you. Hopefully you took a picture and put that up on social media, Ed. Well, you know, I thought about it, but I don't know how to use social media. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jennifer just missed a short, not a shortish putt, made bogey. Ah, come on. <laughs> Oh, I keep know. doing this. So anyway, perfect. Well, Gary, you did guys. you have it? Did you have anything you wanted to ask us while we're here? Because you always do a nice. I see you're on there with us, so this is a good chance to catch us. Um, no, I think I'm. I think I'm good. I, I enjoyed the. Uh, well, I enjoyed a lot of things, but I enjoyed the the cup show thing. It uh, some of the things I've talked to her about over the years, uh, but it kind of brought all of them together. Good. I'm glad it was fun. Uh, they had to edit it because, of course, I asked her some really silly questions. Yep. Make it. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. So, so, Aaron, you'll give me those numbers? Yeah, I've got them right now. I'll put together an email for you, and I'll send it over to you here shortly. And can you just give me a, a, a just a general, uh, you can either do it now or you can do it with with uh, email on just what you thought of how the day went and, and numbers you drew and that sort of thing? Yeah, I, I'll put it all in that email. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Appreciate it. Good job. Bye. Go enjoy this Bye -bye. nice weather. Me <laughs> too. Or sit inside and be quarantined. Have fun. <laughs> feel better, Ashley. Yeah, feel better. <laughs>